Good evening, Norway House friends. We hope you're staying safe and healthy at home. We're com coming to you virtually, and we normally would be welcoming you in person here at Norway House, but we're doing some different means uh, as the situation is. Our mission at Norway House is to connect with contemporary Norway through arts, business, and culture. And as I stand in this living room, we host events from international dialogue to sweet-smelling gingerbread structures to musical concerts with, through the Edvard Grieg program. So now we are excited to open our third exhibit of the year, the John Call Photography Exhibit, and you'll hear more about that shortly. Max Stevenson, our Director of Exhibitions and Programming, will do a virtual tour of the exhibit photograph by photograph and it'll be available to you through our website next week so stay tuned for that and John has been a lobbyist for over almost 50 years at the Capitol and has taken photographs of politicians activists and Nor Nordic Americans and I'm excited to bring them to you tonight so come along with me and we'll start the tour over here in this far southwest corner. So we're social distancing, staying six feet apart from one another as we're doing this interview. And we are now standing here with John Call. And John, why don't you tell me a little bit about these two individuals in this photograph here? Well, thank you very much, Christina. Um, well, this is a picture of special import to me. Uh, I, I'm a big believer in the importance of a free press in a democracy. And both of these individuals have won Pulitzer Prizes, which are a very rare prize for journalists to get. The first one is Robin McDowell. She got a Pulitzer Prize for uh, an expose she did for the Associated Press on commercial fishing industry in Southeast Asia, uh, where actually there was slavery involved in, in, in what was going on there. And as a result of her series, 2,000 people who had been uh, held against their will were released. This is Michael Resendez, who is her significant other. Uh, in 2003, he got a Pulitzer Prize for his expose uh, on the Catholic Church's uh, cover-up of uh, sexual abuse. And there was a movie made about, uh, about the team that worked, did that for the Boston Globe, and it's called Spotlight. It's a very excellent movie. But it was, it was kind of fun to capture two Pulitzer Prize winning journalists in one take. So John, I know you've traveled the world and been to many places and I know you were in Croatia last summer, so tell me a little bit more about this image. Croatia is my second favorite place in the world to visit after Norway, by the way. <laughs> so we were there last summer, my wife and I, we were sailing around the Adriatic and our last night was in Trogir, uh, Croatia, and we, we uh, it was kind of a Wonderful trip, except I, the last day we were there, I dropped my camera and wrecked a lens, and I was kind of upset about that. And then we had dinner at this restaurant, and um, it was at night. The tablecloth was black, my wallet is black. Anyway, the next morning when I woke up and we were flying out of Croatia to come home that day, I noticed that I didn't have a wallet, and I'd left it on the table at this restaurant. So I ran back to the restaurant in a state of hysteria, and it was, the restaurants hadn't opened yet, and this young lady was sitting out, kind of waiting for her restaurant where she worked, which was next to the one I was at the night before, and I told her about my plight. She said, well, you should come back in a half an hour when that restaurant opens. I came back after wandering around a bit, and she had already located my wallet, and uh, she returned it to me. Everything was there, and I said to, I said to her, I love you, <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to offer a, a big tip but she wouldn't take it. So I went off to a local market where they were selling flowers and I came back and I surprised her. And had, as we're walking through the exhibit, here I am, just having a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Of course, this is Mary Lahammer that we know all know so well, uh, a Norwegian journalist, a uh, Norwegian-American journalist in town. Yes. What can you say about this image? Well, it, it was a it was something it was a candid shot. I, I take a lot of candid shots in the Capitol towards the end of every session. I, for a series I call "End of the Session Voyeurism," and this was one of those pictures. There was something going on in the rotunda, and she was covering it, 
And I just kind of caught her by surprise. And I think it captures her intensity and her seriousness about her work. So I always really like this. And the lighting is great. It's almost uh, monochromatic in its tonality. So yeah, that's a fun picture. So John, you have local politicians, several governors on the wall here, and you have and presidents, and of course, Vice President Walter Mondale. And here we have two local activists in Minnesota, Ann Bancroft and Will Steger. And Ann Bancroft is our Midsummer Going Viking honoree this year. Why don't you tell me a little more, more about this picture? Well, this was uh, one of those pictures. Some of the pictures I have, have here I just took, and I, I had proximity to these people over, over the years, but I didn't know Ann Bancroft. So I got a hold of her, and I told her that I wanted her to be a part of my portrait collection of, of interesting people I've known. And we got together for an hour and a half at Nina's Cafe over in St. Paul, and I talked about all this. And, and uh, one of the questions I asked her, I said, you know, I like my pictures to be biographical. And so what would be a good background for your picture? And she said, well, I'd like to shoot it at Clara Barton School in Minneapolis, because that is where I was teaching when I decided to join Will Steger's uh, uh, expedition across the North Pole, which they did with dog sleds. And so that's where we went. When we got there, I was setting up, and Anne disappeared for about 20 minutes, and I was wondering where she went. And it turns out she and the principal went off on a nostalgia tour of the building. She apparently hadn't been there since she had left so many years before. But uh, I love what both she and Will Steger do. They they don't just go on these expeditions for the sake of going on expeditions. They are teaching people about global warming, about geography, and they're also, I think, inspiring young people to follow their dreams. And Anne especially is tuned in on young women and, and wanting to license them to, to follow their dreams and not be shy about pursuing them. And she works closely with Leif Arneson, who's also another right. great Viking honoree who's uh, from Norway. I know they partner on a lot of expeditions together. Throughout. And they wrote a bit, an excellent book, and I uh, highly recommend it. John, here we are. This is just a beautiful, stunning image. Will you tell me a little bit more about her and what she's done? Well, Josie Johnson is one of my heroes. Uh, she's uh, almost 90 years old. She has been very active in the civil rights movement since she was 14 years old, when she was working very hard with her father to repeal the poll tax in, in, in Texas, which was designed to suppress the vote of you know, African Americans. Then she went on and got a good education, and uh, ultimately she ended up in Minnesota, and then she got involved with the Urban League and working on fair housing issues and that sort of thing. And then in 1971, the Democrats in the legislature decided they wanted to put an African-American woman on the Minnesota uh, University of Minnesota Board of Regents. And they decided it was going to be Josie Johnson. And there was a lot of clever parliamentary maneuvering that, w that went on to make that happen, which is in the biography that you can see on the website. In any case, she also was uh, someone who organized people to go to the March on Washington in 1963. And she was in one of those buses that went down into to Alabama and to uh, Mississippi, uh, in the Mississippi, it was called the, uh, I don't know, it was civil rights activity of, of that year, which was a year when a lot of people actually were injured and some were killed uh, because it was such a contentious issue in the South. So, so what is next for you, John? I would like to spend the rest of my time actually doing more of this portraiture. I want to capture significant Minnesotans uh, for, for posterity, for history. And I, I want to take biographical photos that reveal something about their character and personality. I heard you're doing some filming too though, aren't you? Oh yes, I've been, I've been, I've done, I've had three films that I've been involved in that have been on Twin Cities Public Television. And uh, I, I, I'm also working, uh, continuing to work on that. This is what we do at Norway House, we promote the arts, culture, and business. And we do that right here in our living room, in our gallery at Norway House. And we're so thrilled that all of you joined us here tonight. And we can't thank you enough. And next week, you will get the full version of the entire exhibit, and it will be available through our website. So please stay tuned for that. 
And please join us on June 16th at 7 p.m. for our Midsummer Gala, and we'll reveal the Going Viking honorees and how our campaign for the expansion is moving along and progressing. But until then, tous nyerte tak, and we'll see you soon.